Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, do you know the difference between a credit transaction and a cash transaction? Do you know the difference? Well, if you look at your Truth and Lending Act statement, and every single one of you who has a loan of any kind, a Truth and Lending Act statement must be attached. Now, since I think it's 2016, they changed the Truth and Lending Act statement to reword it something else. But please understand the Truth and Lending Act statement specifically says you were loaned credit. Go ahead and take a look. The very first top boxes on the Truth and Lending Act statement, there are a set of boxes, a total of a row of five. It says the amount of credit loaned to you, and it talks about the interest for the credit loaned to you, and it keeps talking about credit. You were given credit. Do you know that that's not funding? Credit does not equate to funding. You cannot fund a loan with credit. That's why banks cannot extend their own credit, because you cannot fund a loan with credit. So let's do some reading, shall we? Fairbanks Corporation and First National Bank of Fairbanks versus, see, both of them are Fairbanks. Hold on now. 97 and 974. This is, this is precedent, old, outdated precedent. In this case, the court held that the credit transaction involves an extension of credit by a lender to a borrower, which creates a contractual obligation to repay the borrowed amount credit rather than an immediate transfer of physical funds. You promise to pay back, look at your promissory note, what was loaned to you. Credit, pay attention, National Bank. The court in this case emphasized that a credit transaction encompasses an agreement between a borrower and a lender, and the borrower will provide a repay credit, respectively, without requiring the actual transfer of cash or funds at the time of the transaction. This case, First National Bank of Oakland. Oakland, Illinois. This case highlights the distinction between a credit transaction and a cash transaction, emphasizing that while a cash transaction involves the immediate exchange of funds, a credit transaction entails the extension of credit by a lender to a borrower, creating a debtor-credit relationship without the necessities of physical fund transfer. Did they tell you that they weren't giving you physical funds? No, of course they didn't, but they're telling you owe them money, saying they'll only accept legal tender. Really? Huh. That's simply, and that's interesting. Look, in these cases, blah, 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 blah. The court emphasized that a credit transaction involves the extension of credit by a lender to a borrower, creating a contractual obligation to repay the borrowed amount without immediate transfer of physical funds. So if they don't have to transfer physical, 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 physical funds, neither do you. For our clients, this is the document you'll be receiving shortly challenging the debt. Pay attention. That's why we're adding interrogatories. Some of you guys are going to have to do your own research because we're not providing that document to you. We're going to provide a similar document, not the one we're providing for our clients. I uh-uh, no, sir, we, Bob. What's the difference between a credit transaction and a cash transaction? Well, thank you, Bob. The main difference between a cash transaction and a credit transaction has, lies in the timing of payment. In a cash transaction, payment is settled immediately at the time of the transaction, whether in cash or via credit card or check or bank transfer. On the other hand, a credit transaction involves the payment at a later date, creating an income due situation without immediate settlement, the accrual method. Cash transaction, see, credit or cash, pay attention, pay attention. The accrual method is credit. The immediate payment method is cash. Go ahead and do your research and tell me I'm wrong. Cash transactions impact cash flow directly and are recorded on both the cash and accrual basis accounting, while credit transactions impact the sheets through asset creation and liability. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't even read on. I didn't read ahead. I just told you it was the accrual method because that's the definition of the accrual method that they just gave. Lord have mercy. By the way, when you get this, because I'm going to put this link in the description. When you get this, by the way, I'm going to put the link in the description. When you get this, again, the link for this will be in the description. 
You're going to continue the conversation, and you're going to take off with the conversation and ask questions. This is perplexity.ai. The link will be in the description. Again, this is perplexity.ai. The link will be in the description. What are the disadvantages of cash transactions compared to a credit transaction? Well, the disadvantages of a cash transaction compared to a credit transaction, oh, by the way, you thought I read all of this before. <laughs> I'm reading this for the first time. I decided to put my search on pause while I told you guys, so we're getting this at the exact same time. Hold on now. Vulnerability of theft. Cash can easily be lost, stolen, or targeted. And lack of record keeping. Cash, hey, transactions, you're just exchanging. Whereas credit, hey, there's documentation. Limited and spending capability, cash restricts spending of physical bills to physical bills, blah, blah, blah. Inability to build credit. Cash transaction doesn't allow you to build your credit because you're just paying cash. So there is some interferences with there. Encouragement of overspending. You can overspend and go beyond your budget when you're dealing with cash. Mm -hmm. There may no advantages or disadvantages. What are the advantages of a credit transaction over a cash transaction? And that's what you're going to You're just going to click. You're going to click away. And you're going to keep on going down to the bottom after you read. There are going to be more questions. What are the advantages of a credit transaction compared to a cash transaction? How did credit transactions affect a person's financial security? And what are some of the common rewards offered via credit cards? Ladies and gentlemen, first thing I did, I was in ChatGPT. I said, hey, what up, ChatGPT? What's going on, homie? Now watch this. Hold on. I want you all to see because we're going to do this together. We're in this life together. We got a time that'll last forever. Don't you know that we're in this love together? Like berries on the vine, it gets sweeter all the time. The late Al Jarreau. Anyway, Al was my boy. I likes me some Al Jarreau, y'all. That man could sing. All the stuff that he'd been through, and you could tell he went through a lot. I don't know much about Al, other than the fact he could sing. That's all I know about Al, y'all. That he could sing, and the songs he sang, I liked it, did, 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 did them. That's right, I liked it, did, did, did them. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Wake up. Since the cash transaction and the credit transaction do not equate to the same thing, comma, they have different functions, Comma. My promissory note says in exchange for the open paren comma and yet the only thing that funded the loan according to the Truth and Lending Act statement comma is credit. Comma. And the lender is demanding that it be repaid only in cash. Comma. And I never agreed to repay the extension of credit, comma, in cash. Period. So I am now doing a letter challenging the debt and I'm introducing interrogatories in my letter comma can you please provide me with eight interrogatories and a challenge to the outstanding debt comma via a notice of pending lawsuit question mark I do appreciate your assistance in this matter. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, he's an idiot. Hold Certainly. On. Below is a sample interrogatory and challenge to the outstanding debt for your notice of pending lawsuit. Your name. Your address. City. State. Zip code. Date. Debt collection agency slash lender name. I'm going to stop him. Wake up. Wake up. I need a more contextualized professional document, comma, that junk you just provided me, comma, looks like a five-year-old wrote it. 
wrote it. Can you please do better? Question mark. Stop listening. Certainly. Certainly. Here's a more Here's refined, a more refined version, version of the notice, of notice of pending lawsuit, lawsuit and challenge, challenge to the outstanding, the outstanding debt. debt. Your name. Your name. Your address, your address, city, now state, remember, zip code, eight date, 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 debt collection, debt collection, collection agency, agency slash lender name, on, address, address, city, state, 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 zip code, zip re, notice, notice of pending lawsuit, lawsuit and challenge to outstanding, outstanding debt. debt. Dear debt, Dear debt collection, collection agency, agency slash lender, lender name, lender I write to, I write to formally contest, contest the purported debt referenced in your correspondence okay. dated date of their correspondence regarding the account number account number. It is my intention to dispute the validity of this debt based on substantial legal and factual grounds, as outlined below. Failure to provide valid documentation. In accordance with the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and other pertinent statutes, I request comprehensive documentation substantiating the existence and validity of the alleged debt. This documentation should include, but is not limited to. Shut up. Hold on, y'all. Now I get him to do it again. Now y'all not going to receive that first junk he just did. Here is the one that y'all need, okay? Woo! Look at him go, dude! And then you'll just add all the other stuff you need to. Remember, do your research on interrogatories. Okay? Now watch this. Wake up. The interrogatories should include proof of funding questions as well as a demand for a comprehensive record of accounting, comma, proof of holder in due course status and proof that the promissory note has not been altered since notif notarization exclamation mark you will add these three additional interrogatories and you will emphasize the notification of pending lawsuit and that this is a pre-lawsuit discovery request. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen. Certainly. Go ahead Here are three additional interrogatories to include in the letter, along with the requested emphasis on pre-lawsuit discovery and the inclusion of proof of funding. Did you see what he just did? He just gave me, uh-uh, I said to incorporate. Wake up. Now redo the letter, comma, incorporating all 11 interrogatories. Comma, it needs to be professional and in outline format, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Before I let him go on, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do this at 15 minutes. Let me make sure you guys understand because some of y'all need to understand what's going on. This is your debt collection process. You want to clear your debts. You want to get rid of all these creditors. This is how you're going to do it. Our clients are receiving something a little bit more detailed, but don't you worry about that because I'm giving you just enough to do what you need to do. All right, now I'm going to let him go. Now, by the way, you can only do 15 interrogatories. The courts will limit you to 15, okay, unless you can prove substantially that you need more. Okay, so he going to go. Oh, give me one second. We'll probably be at more than 15. I mean, I got one more minute. Hold on. Yeah, we're going to be over 15 minutes. I'm going to tell you what I did. I added the case law to it, and I added some other information. I promise you when you go back and you read this, you'll understand. And those of you who are trying to clear your debt, you'll send this to every debt collector. doesn't matter who they be. Because remember, the only way you are having a debt is you volunteer. Your name, your address, your city, address city, state, state zip, code zip code date. Code date. Debt collection, debt collection agency, agency slash lender, lender name address, address city, city state, state zip code, zip code. Re, re notice of pending lawsuit, lawsuit and pre-lawsuit lawsuit discovery, discovery request, request regarding, regarding outstanding, outstanding debt. debt okay ladies and gentlemen so when you get this you can run with it i guess we can do it under 15 minutes go back and read what i just wrote and you'll see that you will benefit from this yeah i know i know nobody else has done this ever 
but I have. Because I have a God, and this is what he teaches me to do. Gotta go!